な素晴らしいトークの後で、ちょっと恥ずかしいんですけど、<笑>えー、あ今回はちょっと英語で、検索とか、あの、参加できるように、えー、My name is Daniel s a m o r i n and I'm in k o r a k a t o s h i b a and there's been a lot of discussion on the Pueblo m a i l i n g list, so I thought this place would be a good place for discussion about uh, all those topics in person. Uh, everybody knows Pueblo. Is there anyone who doesn't know Pueblo? Okay, if you don't know, this is Pueblo. No mas. We're still battling over the uh, logo, by the way. <laughs> Uh, so, Fuego is the combination of Jenkins,、uh, some scripts, and some tests into a Docker container. And for the rest, you will have to go to Tim b e r t s website because this talk actually <laughs> assumes that you know Fuego.、Um, and the goal of this talk is、uh, I'm going to start showing a, little, a few improvements I've made because I want to encourage you to participate in Fuego. Because the level is not as high, for example, as the kernel. There are many things you can do in Pueblo, so I think it's a good、uh, way of starting contributing to open source. And then I would like to discuss Pueblo's r o a d and f i r e b a s e For the kind of Pueblo, no, no, no. Okay, so first I will talk about some small improvements. I mean, as I'm hoping to myself. Uh, so, the first one was about reducing the installation time.、Uh, there is a local file, it installs by default an Arthur chain, but I think it's not very useful, so I think we should remove it. And so, I remove it and I put it in a separate script, and this saves quite a lot of time.、Uh, AGL, JTL、uh, people are doing the same actually.、Uh, then,、uh, instead of the server, was hardwired to the United States. But this,、uh, if you use this address, it actually redirects you to your process server, so this also improves the timing. And one more important thing is I am trying to avoid recloning Fuego core inside the dock. Okay, so I will talk that in the next step. So at the moment,、uh, currently, when you install Fuego inside the Docker、uh, container, you clone Fuego core again. Um, this not only increases the installation time, but it's also very inconvenient for the development because you cannot use your host's power tool tools like mail or case or some graphical tool. And also, the naming is very confusing、oh, because yeah, yeah, yeah. you are cloning Fuego for <laughs> into,、uh, into Fuego, <laughs> <Yes> . <laughs> and then you are calling it Home Jenkins as well. And it's, not, it's not Jenkins Home. <laughs> yeah, I know. Jenkins Home is in bar life. Yeah. Lego Home is in Home Jenkins. Right. And it's like a core. <laughs> <laughs> so I solve everything at once. I use,、uh, use the Docker mounting facility. I just mount Fuego core from the host into the, into the Docker container. I get rid of Home Jenkins. <laughs> and it's, it's called Fuego core inside the container as well. And oh, so that, does that mean then that Fuego core is on your host? Yes, so you can do development just on your phone. Oh my gosh, that's awesome.、Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can use mail, you can use your favorite tools、right. and, and commit and everything, and、okay. you don't have to care about unbearing and USB or you know, this kind of stuff. So, I, sorry, I got, so what I did <laughs> was、uh, really stupid by comparison. <laughs> so I, I, wrote, I wrote a little script that would、uh, push all my tools into the Docker container and set up my Git environment. And, <laughs> I wrote a little automated script, <laughs> but this is way better. So. Yeah, lots of copy from one side to the other. And、yeah. Actually, the copying was also problematic. So, the third, this is very easy. Everyone can do this. Well, so, okay. So, Home Jenkins is not there anymore? So, I had to change lots of. Okay, so. I will talk about So, the wiki needs a major update then. <laughs> okay, well,、yeah. well, when I accept the patent. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so as you see, it's just something very easy. It's like the level is very low for contributing. Everyone, Nina, Antony, who can make it up to you, or who knows, Mr. Nick. 
for uh, solving the CH own help for our dynamics. Uh, so basically, Fuego uh, uses Jenkins, a uh, Jenkins user inside the container. But if you look at it from outside, it's actually, it happens to be message paths because the UID is completely different, right? So what I did is, uh, when, you install, when I installed uh, Docker, I, I use the same UID and GID from the host and the Jenkins file, J the Jenkins user. So when you do that, from outside, it looks like uh, your own username, and from inside, it looks like Jenkins, and you can copy uh, files from one side to the other, and there's, all, there's no problem with the UID. So it's very convenient. Um, so with this, it's easier to develop. And another one is this uh, linking, linking <laughs> help. <laughs> I spent a month documenting that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because it's not, it's not. Yeah, it's a rush. <laughs> so there are lots of links, and then there are lots of path variables which that don't make any sense, and it makes code really hard to read. You don't know where the code is really. So the solution is, I just made three. Uh, variables, fast variables. One is the Jenkins one, which is the, the default Jenkins variable, and then two ones. One is for Fuego core, and usually that. And everything is just a uh, relative path to them, and so it's very easy to actually find where everything is. Another very basic thing, but it was just really annoying to follow the same links. <laughs> um, and now, because Jenkins can access Fuego Core directly because it's mounted with Jenkins permissions. You don't need to do any CH or any link or anything. It's much easier. Much, much okay, so, uh, so Fuego Core is at root in the repository. Where is it on your own system? Or does it matter? Right? It doesn't really matter. Yeah, okay. uh, actually, it doesn't really have to be in root. You can put it anywhere you want. You <coughs> have to define the Fuego Core environment. I just put it in root because user data is also in root, so it's right. easier to find. Okay, so those were uh, just very simple ones. I have more, but I wanted to go ahead and start some discussion time. So I selected a few a few topics. Uh, one of them, first one, is about maintaining Jenkins upgrade. I, I mean, this, if you look at Fuego, there are lots of customizations uh, for Jenkins and for plugins. And so when you want to upload upgrade Jenkins, you face a lot of challenges. Right? This plugin is no longer existing. There are lots of configuration files that depend on this plugin and so on. So I I upgrade Jenkins to the latest stable version. And these were a few lessons I learned. The first thing is instead of saving so at the moment for each of for each test there is a configuration file in XML format. And instead of doing that, just create a template, and then with the script you can fill all the differences, like the name, like the name, the name of the script you have to call, right? And then just you can add those uh, jobs to Jenkins by using this tool, a Jenkins command line interface. So basically, you can do everything programmatically. And if when you upgrade Jenkins, there is a new format, then you just have to change the template and ge regenerate everything. All right, so a question I have on that. Um, the config.xml, were they all, one of the things I worried about was the whether or not there was any difference in the base script invocation section, or is that? Yeah, it's very consistent. So okay. most of them are the same, just the name of, of the right. test, and right. it's the name of the test, dot sh. Right. So well, it, it'd probably be worthwhile like making that a rule. Yeah, I think. Because then it would be, we wouldn't have to worry about it. Yeah, exactly. So, it would be a little bit opinion, opinionated, but I think it makes it easier to... Yeah, the, the well then you can, then your template is much easier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Um, then I was trying to install only those plugins that are really, really essential. And focusing on those that are really very popular and are not going to disappear. Uh, and especially, for example, I know that there are many plugins in Jenkins, but I think, like for example, 
and some security plugin. I think those plugins should be left as an exercise for the user because otherwise we are maintaining stuff that we really don't need. So just install the essential plugins instead of of uh, making it very useful by doing out of the events. I don't know what you think about that. Okay, another thing I I detected in current Pro was that they were when they when they customized they actually replaced all files instead of replacing specific parts. So for example the Jenkins configuration is one file that is overwritten. Okay? Probably from one from that file there is only one small thing they change. So that when you upgrade you don't know which part because they were upgrading the whole file. So what I did is I converted that to using set uh, to just change the part that needs to be changed. So when we, when we upgrade uh, to a new version and maybe the configuration file format has completely changed, we at least know what kind of thing we have to change, right? And then I think Tim talked about decluttering the interface and yeah. some style modification, yeah. but I think it's better to leave it as it is without much modifications, otherwise we'll have to... Okay, so in, in mine, I just took names and put it out. I mean, there's a couple of, there's okay. a whole bunch of plugins that's like, that have no bearing on what we're doing at all. Right, so. in, in previous versions of Jenkins, there were many plugins installed by default. New version, there's nothing oh, installed by default. Not okay. And you have, when you start, they suggest you some plugins, but we can say, no, I don't want any plugins. Okay. So, uh, okay, so second one. Oh, all right, can you go back and talk about the very last one? Oh, okay. So, um, okay, so there are, to be able to develop Jenkins, you need to know several languages. You need to know shell script language, you need to know uh, Java if you are going to build the plugins, you need to know uh, JavaScript. You need to know Sorry. also this Ruby. Uh, I don't. I don't. Python, want to write the parsers. Python, yeah, Python. Uh, probably some point about Ruby also. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so I, I think it's not very good to have this Ruby language because nobody knows. I mean, somebody knows Ruby. Yeah. So oh really? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but normal people. Uh, I mean, normally, um, most people <laughs> normally, most people don't know for <laughs> so, Well, it's only used three places. So can you, you told me a bunch, but can you okay. say again? Right. So uh, how are you avoiding the Ruby scripts? So uh, one of them is the get, uh, get targets. Right. So for the get targets, uh, uh, the, okay, something's changed in, in the new version, and now uh, instead of having targets, you can have nodes. Normally, nodes are the place where you compile the test, but in our case, we can also use them for actually running the test because everything goes to them. So the nodes are auto automatically appear in the in the jobs, so I didn't have to change that. Okay. About the the other ones, I still have to do more work about the other okay. Ruby script is used a uh, combination filter, you know, uh, in Jenkins job, a combination filter. Uh, most uh, ma job maintainer of Jenkins is using Ruby uh, for uh, combination time, time for it, right? Right. Yeah, 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 I know what you say. Like, for example, if you have a list of a list of tests, mm -hmm. you can load it dynamically yeah, yeah, yeah. into the job mm -hmm. The thing is, uh, do we really want to have dynamic things? Or uh, what I mean is, normally, like now, if, when you are doing tests in, in, in Quebec, you can just select the board, mark some parameters, and run it. But normally, what we want to do is, instead of dynamic, we don't we want to do it periodically, right? Like, right. So, I'm not sure if we really want need uh, to do it dynamically. Or we can just put all the tests statically and then just select the one you want. Um, the time, what I mean, the period for the testing, or the put like a trigger or something. All um, oh, right. Well, yeah. I actually had to go in and override mm -hmm. the test definitions to have it specifically target specific boards. Mm -hmm. So I had to like kind of 
push the dynamic stuff out of the way for some of the stuff I was doing. Right. So I don't know. So that's worth discussing on the landing list. How we can, if we could eliminate the groovy scripts, that would be great because it would make one less dependency in the entire system. So. Okay, how about the other functions? Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. So we can discuss that more on this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, second thing is actually maybe even more important is uh, I think uh, we talked a little bit about in the main list, but maybe you didn't know. Uh, we have a lot of tests, and each test has a different uh, output format. So LTP, for example, has many test cases. Each test case has many test programs and each test program has different uh, output uh, and other tests as well. So we need to kind of uh, parse all those logs and uh, put, put them in some specific format that is not actually uh, in file yet. And we were thinking, we were discussing about that. And then I checked the AGL uh, JTA uh, branch and I, th I saw that they were using a new script, get results detail, uh, that uh, speaks uh, XML format. Uh, and then with this XML format, you can create the uh, visualizers. Uh, kernel CI instead uses one JSON schema per test. Uh, so <coughs> if you had to use their yeah, approach. Per, per test is not going to fly. It's yeah. got to be something cool. So basically, kernel CI has a lot of detail, like uh, what day, what branch, what commit ID, everything in a separated uh, element. But uh, I'm not sure if we have so much uh, resources <coughs> for doing each test in, in a different way. And the visualizer will have to also take care of each of them. So right. My proposal is to use a single JSON schema. One one simple uh, schema that is compatible for most tests. So we will have to make these parsers and then the visualizer. Uh, uh, the only thing I feel bad is that AGL GTI parsers are. Uh, <laughs> are you writing that in XML? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, if somebody knows about these scripts, do you think? They could modify them to convert them into JSON format, or uh, we can always write an XML to JSON converter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have a, a single format I for all tests? I think so. Okay. Well, we should at least look at their schema. Mm -hmm. uh, the other, so we talked about tap. The other one I want to look at is yeah. uh, XUnit. Yeah, yeah, XUnit is also very powerful and supported in Jenkins. Right. Plan, so. right. By the way, is there any person working on AGL JTA? They're not very good. So Fuego is still in a development phase. There's lots of work to do, and I think it's kind of absurd that we are working in separate <laughs> branches. Uh, so last time in January uh, 58, uh, they told me that uh, they will they will closely uh, they will fill this gap between us. Is there any news about that, or are you going to continue by yourself? Uh, it's kind of impossible because uh, we have no special intention to fork the JTA, <laughs> but uh, they want to combine them together to assign the their automated build tools. But uh, we have somehow coordinated to assign this the latest update into the JTA. So. So February is the best timing because we have some uh, member meeting in Japan. Okay. So let's discuss it more because uh, John Simon is a key guy to doing this uh, JTA thing. Uh, John Simon, yeah. John Simon. yeah. So one of, one of the major uh, points of difference was uh, I know the migration to a new version of Jenkins, uh -huh. right?
right? So if we can get the <coughs> that figured out on our side, that's going to be one barrier between the two projects, I think, mm -hmm. for them kind of coming back together. Uh, so that's one thing. And then we can look at their XML stuff, uh, their output formatting, and if we could adopt either something similar or something even that we just use their system as is, but uh, have an extra phase if we want to do JSON or something. Uh, as long as we're not throwing away their stuff, uh, if it's easy for them to get it, you know, to support whatever their requirements are, then uh, hopefully we can get it back together. Yeah. So they're just using the JIRA as a whole environment. So uh, the this part must be the combined JIRA because uh, if you send a party, so it automatically goes to the JIRA and uh, go directly to the this Right. Yeah. Okay. If you don't participate, I will go ahead. I I will make it for you better, and you get you you will not get this uh, improvement. So. Um, so the next one is going to be the integration with the kernel CI. Uh, I think this is a very important chance for Fuego. Uh, kernel CI is very well known in the world, but they only have two tests, good tests and good tests. So there is a, a gap that Fuego could fill. Uh, so uh, in the short term, I think it's very easy to add uh, the build tests to Fuego. So we will have uh, Fuego on our local machine, and then we can test, for, for example, ATSI kernels on our boards, or maybe uh, CIP kernels. And then uh, we can send the results automatically to the kernel CI server, and this is quite easy. Uh, for the boot tests, I will install Lava and, and do the same. But uh, this is only for boot and, and build. We need to uh, add on the Fuego tests. So I'm thinking which, I, I have some question. Which one, which uh, option do you think is better? Should we modify the kernel CI to admit other tests or should we actually provide a REST API for Fuego? So this here, this kernel CI server, instead of supporting only input, and, and build logs, should we extend it to, for example, LTP, uh, except uh, file system performance tests, and so on? Or should we completely replace the kernel CI by Fuego? Yeah, Fuego is <laughs> That's a difficult question. <laughs> the thing is, if we if we contribute to kernel CI, uh, we have to kind of implement also the visualization part here. So for example, benchmark, we have some graphs, but in kernel CI, you don't have anything that looks like a graph. It's only like a database with uh, some columns or right. something. So yeah, Fuego already has a lot of graphs, and if we are going to make visualizers, we have to do it either in Fuego or in kernel CI. Well, I don't think it, I mean, one of the reasons I started work on the FTC tool was to provide, is to make it so that we could have like a scriptable interface into the Fuego mm -hmm. system. Um, so I mean, that would play into doing a REST API on Fuego. Uh, and the other thing I started work on after looking at Lava was a data dictionary. Uh, and I did, I, that kind of, that work kind of stalled out, so I got, Side work on other things, but I, I do want to kind of get back to it. So we, I would like us to have uh, Fuego to have some place to store the data uh, that is uh, for specific or test specific or whatever. Uh, so adding some database kind of capabilities to the system, but that's a lot of work. We're yeah. ways off, and I'd rather just leverage what other people are doing. <laughs> so another possible option is we extend Kernel CI. Just normally, like like it is now, it, uh, that would be easy. So we just have tables, right? Tables right. of data, and then uh, diff we create a different tool that just goes to the database, downloads the, the data and with the REST API, and performs the graph. Right. So it yeah. the visualizer, 
the energy light and then the gate. Yeah, in that case, uh, how, how would you uh, like to extend the uh, color CI's uh, user interface? Oh, so in that case, the pronunciation yeah, would be like it is now, yeah. but uh, we have more schemas. Instead of having the build schema and the boot schema only, we would add, for example, fuego schema. And from there, we can use uh, the get uh, API to download the data and just perform but our where, Yeah, but where, where uh, the fuego is running? Yeah, actually, that, uh, there is a two, uh, two means about the kernel CI. One means for about the the kernel CI uh, code itself, and uh, another is a kernel CI service, kernel CI door. Right. Yeah, so that uh, uh, which one would you like me make a target? Okay, so kernel CI has first it has a storage server, it has a backend server, and it has a front end, right? Yeah. So you, you install everything with a, a Vagrant or a Docker file, and you put it in your local sto a, a server. If you do that, a, you just install the well and then communicate to your local server. But if possible, at some point, you could have a server in Amazon, for example, and being able to share everything. Or if possible, we, would, we, we could contribute to the upstream the CI server and maybe they get accepted some of our code. Yeah, I think that our, the current CI guys are uh, very open uh, so that uh, uh, you can, uh, you will have uh, some chance to talk with me. Um, but I think that uh, you, at first it's better to start with the uh, current CI uh, code so that you can download from yeah. GitHub, so that uh, you better to make a demo system. Right. And uh, because we don't know what the Fuego is, like, uh, what the Fuego uh, requires, what kind of resource, like uh, servers, what uh, kind of servers, or something like that. Actually, Jenkins, I mean, Fuego, similar to this, is used yeah. by Linaro. So Linaro has Jenkins, and Linaro is compiling the kernels. Yeah with the kernel CI build script yeah. and sending the API. So it's the same, I'm gonna copy Linaro's code exactly as it is. It's yeah, in that, that it yeah. anyway, in that case, it is better to run the variable inside the kernel CI at all, because the uh, no, no, no. everyone can use that. Uh, you mean uh, send the, the, all the boards to yeah. whatever it is? Yeah. Of course, that because that be the the let's say the, uh, the goal of this uh, say, test project, I think everyone can get that. Uh, I well, no. so so yeah, so so my goal with this though, so I don't think that the kernel CI model scales. Uh, the kernel CI model is that uh, you set up a board farm. Yeah. Uh, and there's only so many people on the planet that can do that. My my vision is that an individual developer, I've got a I've got a board, you know, in this little box here, and I can run Fuego, and now I have a test node that can contribute to the you know the global testing. It's so like a P2P or system. Yeah, uh, it's a completely distributed. Yeah, and I mean ultimately, it'd be really nice if. You know, I wasn't even aware, you know, I'd like to put this whole thing, the laptop and the test stuff, in a closet, and then get to a point where other people could schedule tests on it, right? So, like, Ted Show has a new version of, uh, you know, ext 4 or something, and there's an XFS test in Fuego, and so he says, well, I need, I need, you know, 20,000 nodes on 10,000 different platforms to run XFS tests on this new code. Yeah, and that's that's my long term vision. Okay, <laughs> uh, actually, but uh, uh, yeah, I think that the kernel CI not all the vision is uh, a bit different. Because right, that, uh, it's, yeah. it's different from that. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, because that, that there are many, uh, let's say, all companies on the uh, SOC companies, uh, vendors, uh, will make uh, their products, but uh, they don't uh, tend to open it. In that case, uh, if they up, if they uh, contribute their code to uh, some someone, some uh, code can, uh, parts can break it, but uh, 
right, they right, don't right. Uh, know this stuff. So that uh, we put the yeah, they have got the uh, every board and uh, testing, yeah, to make sure that uh, no one can break them. Right, right, right. Yeah, kernel CI is very, very much focused on top of tree. Make sure that the new patches coming into top of tree are not breaking existing yeah. platforms. Um, and this, and Fuego's not focused on that. <laughs> so there, I mean, so they are different. The question is where to put each one. I mean, ultimately, it, yeah, I don't, I don't know enough about the kernel CI architecture. I know a little bit about Lava, but I haven't played with kernel CI yet to know where the best place to put stuff is. Mm -hmm. I do like, uh, uh, it, it, I do like running Boot or uh, kernel CI without lava, because lava is a big mess. Oh, yeah. uh, if there's like a, so I I would like to be able to do, my, my personal preference would be able to run a kernel CI test directly from Fuego, just using a very simple interface. Um, and then setting the data back, uh, but I don't, if they've already got the stuff for data aggregation and data querying on their server, I, that's something I don't want to think we should reproduce. So, hmm. I don't know. So I don't kind of want to see it both places. Uh, by the way, in theory, or what's the public uh, repository about the, the, uh, the current test or some other test cases? Uh, yeah. I mean that uh, if we are, uh, let's say, uh, correct or uh, get the, uh, the test cases together, right? Yeah, in that case we can share the, the, the test case. In oh the yeah, different. Uh, even the different uh, test framework. Yeah. Well, so I start. I started talking to Feng Huang Wu about the zero day tests and comparing them to what we have in Fuego, and they're actually fairly fairly similar. Um, and in fact, the thing I'm focused on right now is on test prerequisites, uh, checking for uh, the dependencies that you have to determine before you run a test. And I wanted to adopt what Feng Wang is doing in, in Zero Day. What he's missing in Zero Day is he doesn't have any visualization, doesn't have a, kind of a back end at all. Uh, well, his back end is he has the automated stuff to send out uh, you know, reports which is really cool for the kernel community. Um, and then, uh, but he doesn't have, you know, kind of like a database of, of stuff that's online or online. Uh, the other thing uh, he doesn't have in his system is he's got like build instructions and, and all that, but he does not have, um, they're not cross compiled. He doesn't have any notion of tool chains or cross compilation or that. Um, so anyway. I think, uh, you know, which one? Uh, kernel CI is more like a database server. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It stores the results of our tests, we can search them, and then we can visualize them. Fuego are at top of tree. 
Uh, so, you know, if we buy, if we generate a whole bunch of bucket reports for like a four four kernel, nobody in the kernel community cares. Uh, they aren't going to look at it at all. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so we have that, there's a whole different problem. Yeah. <coughs> um, okay. Another topic is the test plans. So, if each target uh, normally needs they need different parameters when they run the test. So some targets are, have a lot of memory, other ones have a little. And um, currently there is a, something called test plans and test effects. So basically you choose uh, some specific, I mean currently existing test specs, which are very little. Uh, and I think it's, they are kind of difficult to use because they are not associated with boards, to the board files themselves. And I think because of that, I saw many people in AT and JTA, they are actually uh, overriding that, and they are just writing the variables in the board files directly. Uh, so I think that's also not a good idea. Yeah, the uh, test plans need the whole new structure. It needs to be revamped from scratch, I think. Um, it would, yeah, the way it, the way it is associated now is, it, it's got all kinds of problems. I thought that by the form lists actually should have kind of a, they should figure out the parameters. Yeah, it, it, any auto detection is good. One of the things I want to do is, um, that's why I want to create a board dictionary so that a test can find out, you, you can do like a probe, a probe, uh, either a standalone test or a part of an existing test. It can probe a bunch of variables, store them in, store them in a dictionary, and it's not something that the user has to manage. Uh, right now, I'm writing that into the board file itself, but we can put it somewhere else. Um, and then and then use those later. It would be much better to auto detect those, I think, if you're right. Another option is that there's no, no interface you can graphically input the parameters you want to. Okay, that's something I'll have to look at for them. For the when, when did that come into being? When, uh, by February, of course. No, 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 I mean, the, you, you're saying you're using the node interface of Jenkins, right? Yeah. So what, what version of Jenkins supports that? I think from 1.6 or Oh, from 1.6? Six. Six. Oh, well, we're just like a little bit behind. Okay. Um, then the test packaging. All right. Uh, we are currently using Torvalds. Uh, this was also discussed in the main list. Uh, uh, that's like any other source for the data updated, so I think updating the toggles is quite a, not scalable because the yeah. cluster is going to grow super big. So that's, that's correct. And you were mentioning that you want to have a specific version, but I think we could do that, that with the commit IDs. And right. Uh, the only problem is that with the toggles you have them locally, so you are, you are sure that this Right, right. Is, uh, the Yakko project and all the other build systems have gone through the exact same sequence of events and thought processes, which is that uh, you want to keep up to date, you don't have to store all this stuff. At the same time, uh, for your sanity, you want to make sure you have everything local. Uh, so what I would, I actually do have a proposal here, and it's what most of them do, which is to, um, I think you should uh, allow people to refer to the repository, uh, but have like a repository cache somewhere to so mirror locally. And if, there, if you happen to have that thing in your mirror, then you use that. Um, that's what Yonko does. And, and we don't have to do the exact same technique, but you know, the other thing that solves is the proxy uh, the issue of being behind the firewall. Um, so if you had a if you had a command to populate your cache with the tarballs, that would be good too. If we mirror the repositories, for example, in GitHub, um, I don't think this wanna be such a problem. If it's a GPS protocol, well, GitHub, yeah. if it if it falls down, it will be up very quickly. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sometimes, uh, yeah, how about you know when issues? Uh, when I uh, Grow a huge repository, for example, one gigabyte. Right. Uh, 
the blocks is the quality, the size. Based on oh. size. <laughs> Sometimes it oh. happens. So it depends on the environment. So, right. yeah. But uh, yeah. For, for myself, I just check the <laughs> other things. <laughs> so. So you just want to, you just want to have get repositories with the tarballs, or do you want to have the float it out? I don't know. Maybe at first we can have the, a combination of both. Then make a server and put the um, checksums also. Okay. okay. Well, first, I think the first step there is to. Um, actually support the downloading the source instead of the embedding the source. Mm -hmm. And then we can talk about mirroring and all that other stuff. Okay. Okay. Uh, That's okay. <laughs> so uh, I think we should meet up, meet together and, and talk this like, more properly. Don't <laughs> <laughs> uh, worry, don't worry. Don't do too much work. Right? Well, okay, yeah, so when is the best time to have a future event? I mean, there's right. there's Fuego specific, but then there's kind of a wider set of people, mm -hmm. right, that are interested in this mm -hmm. test stuff. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about ELC, but ELC is coming really fast. I don't know if I have time to put something together uh, like a, a standalone event. I could do a track because I'm on the program committee, but uh, but I think uh, we should. Hawaii Hawaii what? Hawaii Hawaii Hawaii. <laughs> well, the next, well, the next one coming up, which is not that far after, will be LCJ. But yeah. lives in Japan. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's a fair number of Japanese people. would be good because it's already it's connotated with the uh, AGM summit probably um, as well. Okay. Today, so we can talk together. I might be able to get the AGM. <coughs> Like last year, last time we had the ITSI meeting, right? So we could talk to them. Okay. Well, should we plan to do something then at LCJ? Mm -hmm. We could do a test test summit. Okay. That would be a plan. <coughs> and then other <coughs> topics uh, here. Fuego uh, release engineering. We are. Uh, I mean, this is probably mostly <laughs> for timber. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is supposed to be. Uh, yeah, it's a pain to make a, a FOIO release, and it's really hard to test changes. Before you release, to make a big change to the test infrastructure itself, you want to make sure that you haven't broken all the tests. Yeah. And unfortunately, that means you have to like run all the tests, and there's a whole bunch. So making a release is a very long, involved process. And right now, it's all manual. With the new version? you will be able to test in your Docker file by the native machine. So right, yeah, that would be good too. Well, the other here. actually, you know, moving moving Fuego Core out of Docker, or making it available in and out of Docker, means I can also test other um, front ends, mm -hmm. which is one of our plans, so. Um, so using a single repository. Uh -huh. I don't know, maybe it's easier for you to use hot one or something. <laughs> well, maybe. I don't know. Is there, I mean, Cochin is the one that split them apart. And it seemed like a good idea given that they had this, you know, one that builds the Docker container and one that has all this other stuff. Uh, and I'm not sure exactly all the reasons they had for splitting them apart. Uh, but it is a pain to, you know, because you've got that Git clone that's inside the container. But now that you've gotten rid of that, maybe maybe we don't need it. Maybe we just have a single point of repository. You um, <coughs> something about writing tests. Okay, so the idea here, and this is based on an idea I had talking to some of the other guys, is that um, so uh, there's a group at Intel that is working on how to how to run all of the unit tests for all of the packages in the distribution. Um, and um, they want to create a set of standards for how unit tests for open source packages should be written. Uh, one of the ideas I think that, well, that I'd like to propose is that we have, to start with, not so much a hard standard, but a set of guidelines and then uh, ratings based on those guidelines. 
So for instance, you know, like if you use, if, if the way that you run your unit test is make test, that seems to be used by about 40% of the, of the packages in the standard distribution. Some of them use make check, and then there's a long tail of other weird make targets or commands that you do. But like we give you one point for that. <laughs> And then, and then if you could cross compile, we'd give you five points for that. If you uh, if, if you have some demonstrable and measurable level of coverage, we'd give you a certain number of points. And then we just give each test, uh, each unit test in a package, uh, a score, uh, and then say you are you know like 69 out of 103, uh, and then. The, the value of having a single score is then you can say, well, you know, look, GCC is really good, and you know, like Python, I, you know, I'm making up stuff. Python is bad; it could be improved. But then you, but because you have a scoring system, they know exactly what it is that they're short on, right? They so say it's not it's not that you're trying to gamify the whole thing, but it's it's a way of communicating that these are the attributes of a good unit test uh, that. Uh, are valuable and how valuable each one is, uh, and then the, it, it, you're not necessarily trying to trying to convert all previously written unit tests, but it does provide guidance for future and if people want to try to conform, conform then you do it. So that's that's the idea there. Um, I think we're a long ways off, and I don't think it's our job to do that. I kind of think it's those from Rodriguez's job. So anyway, <laughs> but I'll talk to them about that. Um, okay, we're out of time. I think we are out of time. I'm sorry to make such a boring presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much.